Everybody, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos for OnlineChessLessons.net. In this video, I'm gonna analyze a game of round eight between Grandmaster Garwana against Grandmaster Lamy. So let's get started. Uh, white plays e4, and black plays c6, which is the Karokan defense. Uh, white plays d4, and black plays uh, d5. Here, white plays e5, which is the advanced variation. You know that white can also try a knight c3 or knight d2 in both variations. Usually, black takes here, and then we get the very main line. After this, this is the most famous line in the Karokan, and uh, white can also try taking on d5. And after c takes c4, which is the panoff uh, variation, usually white is looking to play with the isolated pawn on d4, but he'll get a powerful attack. Uh, okay, so let's see the game. Uh, white plays e5. Usually this e5 line, it's a positional one. Uh, white wants to play with more space in the center. And black plays uh, bishop f5. Uh, if we compare this opening, the Karokan, with the French defense, for instance, we'll see that uh, Black has the chance of getting his bishop out of the pawn chain. I mean, he's gonna play bishop f5 and then he's gonna play e6. In the French defense, uh, usually, let me show here, after e4, e6, d4, d5, if white plays the advanced variation here with e5, well, Black will have counterplay at queenside, but usually this bishop, it's inside the pawn chain. So this is a little difference, which is worth uh, saying. So yeah, let's see the game now. Uh, black plays bishop f5, and usually here white, nowadays, uh, white plays knight f3 followed by bishop e2, which is the positional line. And the other line would be knight c3, and when black plays e6, white usually tries c4. This is quite an aggressive line. But at the same time, we have to say that black's position is quite solid. So if white white's attack is not successful, then we'll have trouble defending the center. So in this game, white plays h4 which I think it's kind of sideline. I'm not an expert here because I'm not a four player and I, I played the Karokan only a few times in my career, but I can say that against h4, I think uh, black can play h5 too. In this game, as you'll see, uh, black plays h6. Uh, h5 uh, looks interesting too because we are not uh, giving away too much space uh, at at kingside. As you'll see in this game, white gets a lot of space at kingside. If we play h5, we don't allow g4, for instance. And regarding this line, uh, I recommend you take a look at Spiedler Nakamura game. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think it was c4, e6, knight c3, uh, and black plays knight e7. And here Spiedler plays bishop g5. This was a quite interesting game. And thing is, white is uh, right now he's down a pawn, but he gets a lot of compensation and a better center. So if you want to study this line, I I recommend you look at this game. So in this game, uh, black plays uh, h6, and white plays in an aggressive way, she4, black plays uh, bishop to d7, and here, well, uh, you may ask why not bishop to h7, because, well, the bishop here in this diagonal is powerful too. Usually here, uh, white can play e6, and now it's like black is in trouble, see, 
first of all, as white, we want to take on f7, and we are destroying the king defense. And if black takes here, he'll have uh, such a uh, bad development here, right? For instance, uh, we can control the e-file as, as white. We'll have some threats on this diagonal as well. Knight of three plus 95 one day. And the most interesting concept here is that black uh, will have problems developing this bishop, right? So that is why usually against this line, uh, black plays bishop d7. Right now, black wants to play like in French style with e6 and then c5. And it's going to be a little different because white, it's like he's weakening his king side a bit. But let's see, because as we'll see in this game, this g4 plus h4 gives white uh, a big space advantage. So white plays h5. I like this move because uh, if we play anything else as white, uh, just to give an example, if we play c3, black may consider playing h5 one day. And okay, if we take, then our pawns are not that powerful. And if we play g5, the bishop can come back again. Then he'll play e6 and probably knight here and knight here. And he's blockading our pawns at king side. This is not great for us. So if we play h5 as white here, it's like we fix the pawn structure. Now he can he can't play h5. So it's like we make sure we get a nice space advantage at king side. So so far this is interesting. E6 makes sense. Now black wants to create counterplay at queen side as soon as possible. And white plays f4. Usually, uh, if we follow the concepts, we should develop a piece as white here, but as the position is closed and we have too much space, looks like as white we can afford uh, to spend more tempos uh, moving pawns and building up a strong center, as we will see here. Now black plays in the French style, usually in the French variation, when white advances with e5, uh, black plays queen b6, uh, trying to put pressure on d4 and b2, so white can't play bishop e3, because b2 is falling. So knight to f3, and now uh, black plays uh, bishop b5. Black wants to trade off these bishops, uh, because uh, usually this bishop it's the bad bishop in the French defense, and why not? Maybe in the Karokan as well. I mean, if he plays something like this, usually this bishop, it's crashing into black's pawns. So that is why it's a wise idea to trade these bishops off. And by the way, in this line, I'm a bit worried about bishop f8, because this bishop won't have many squares. So bishop f5, white takes, queen takes, and knight to a3. White takes the chance of developing a piece uh, and winning some tempo at the same time. This is great. As long as we can speed up development, that's a great choice. Queen b6. Queen a4 check. Well, I, I, I like this idea because I like White's next move, actually. It's not easy, right, uh, to, to understand this move at first sight. But as we'll see, right now, uh, I mean, this is how I think, right? Uh, if we get an endgame as white, I guess we are much better because we have, as I said before, such a big space advantage at kingside, right? And by trading queens, black won't have any counterplay at queenside. And I feel like we can play for a win risk-free as white. So that is why maybe he played queen a4, because if he plays queen c6, we can just trade queens. And maybe, if we want to develop this bishop, we can also try something like this, trying to play bishop e3 later. But, okay, let's see what we have with queen a4, knight c6, and now knight to c2. And I guess this is white's idea, actually. 
uh, as we'll see, I guess black has to take here. If he plays c4 trying to close that position, we can just play knight e3, so our queen comes back. When black plays c4, uh, he's quitting himself all the counterplay at queenside, because now queenside is closed, and we'll be attacking at kingside uh, without caring about queenside, because black doesn't have any raptor there. And if he's not taking on on d4 here, like if he plays something like knight e7, we may consider playing d takes e5 as white, and after queen takes, bishop e3, and again we have a powerful development and the control of the d4 square. So again, I think this is great for us. So he has to take, and white takes with the c-pawn. This is an interesting decision. If we take with the knight, which looks great too, because we place a strong knight on d4, and black cannot push this knight back with a pawn, he can play something like bishop c5 maybe, and it's like we have to deal with this diagonal. Black is going to finish his development. It's not that clear to me. Uh, if we take with a pawn, well, it's like we still have our development and space advantage, and if we are successful here, as I said before, we're going to have a much better endgame. Black plays queen a5. He decides to trade queens, but yeah, the thing is, what else can he play? Because if he plays knight e7, uh, just to try to finish development, then it's not clear where where is this knight going. And and if we have to follow knight c8, again, I don't know where where's the knight going, so maybe we have to move the bishop. But if we play bishop e7, then this knight doesn't have any good square. And maybe bishop b4, it's playable, but I guess we can take with the knight. And black is trading queens anyway. Well, here we have to be uh, a bit careful, but not much, I think. We can play something like king e2, I guess. And then we just develop our bishop. We'll have a powerful attack at king side. Uh, I think this endgame, this bishop is going to be strong. So I don't think I don't think black wants to play this endgame. So by playing five. Right now, black has the best bishop, and our bishop is supposed to be a bad one, crashing into our own pawns, but I think this bishop, we can make it stronger. Right now, white plays king e2. As you'll see, we'll find a nice square for our king on d3, because it cannot be attacked here. And as you know, the king is a powerful piece in endgame, so king e2 is great. Black plays knight e7, b3, well, we are playing against this knight, so I guess b3 it's okay. Rook c8, and king d3. Probably we're going to continue with bishop d2, and we're con we going to control any knight b4 check, the c file, and black doesn't have many pieces to attack us here, so... And without queens, you also know that there's no attack usually, so our position is safe. Bishop d2, and here we have, looks like a peaceful endgame right here. Although there are a lot of pieces on board, and we'll have the chance in the future of opening that position up at kingside. And here is where we have our advantage as white. So rook c7, knight to h4. One day we're going to play f5, and the great thing here is that I, I think black can't stop it. He plays knight c8, and we play f5. We can also consider one day taking here, and we take control of the g6 square. He plays a5. Well, um, maybe you'll think that a5 is a mistake, because now he's leaving some squares at queenside. But, as I always say, it's better sometimes to defend actively rather than sit and wait, right? I mean, 
I think black has to do something here because otherwise sooner or later we'll take here or we are gonna advance more at kingside and black has to create some counterplay. That's the best way of defending sometimes. Rook a f1 looks great and rook g8 well this rook is uh, preparing against this future f takes e6 followed by knight g6 so now the rook won't be attacked on h8 and rook h2 uh, what I like about uh, white's play here is that uh, white doesn't have any rush right he can prepare as much as he wants because black it's like without any counterplay so this rook h2 preparing maybe rook f2 it's great and that is why I think black decides to play f6 here again if he sits and wait here with something like knight b6 one day we're gonna take here maybe we can still prepare it with rook f2 and we're gonna play knight g6 we're gonna have such a strong attack at kingside so I guess um, black tried uh, to defend actively here since the king is on d3 and maybe he'll have some counterplay some checks maybe on e5 or knight d6 followed by knight e4 uh, it's hard to see right here but I guess that with f6 black is looking for for that uh, we take on f6 yeah otherwise he'll take I mean if we take on e6 he'll take on e5 and here we see the danger of having the king on d3 so white takes here black take and now well we can take on e6 but then he'll take on g4 and he'll be attacking this pawn as well looks much more it's wise to play knight e3 because we defend this one and if he moves this pawn d5 is also falling so knight e3 it's great too uh, sometimes it's great to slow down a little and then continue attacking like here not allowing black any counterplay and as we'll see he's got two weaknesses here on f6 and h6 and this bishop will be defending them this bishop is gonna uh, become a tall pawn soon so this is great black plays e5 and knight takes d5 attacking the rook and the pawn rook f7 and as as we see here uh, yeah we are up a pawn as white although black has some counterplay he wants to take on g4 and on d4 as well if we take on e5 he'll take with the knight and then he'll take on g4 and it's not that clear uh, our king again here may be a target so we have to be careful that is why I think knight g6 it's just great we give our pawn back but at least the position is not that open so our king on d3 is safe knight takes d4 and bishop e3 uh, well we can go after the pawn as well although as I said it's maybe better not to allow any any counterplay although I guess right here this looks playable I mean black cannot play here because we just check and we take the rook maybe he can try something like this followed by rook here anyway I mean feels like we are still ahead here as white but as I said in previous videos as well sometimes it's better to take it easy I mean I don't think this pawn is our main target when he's got all his pieces stuck here so knight c6 king to e2 makes sense we're gonna put our king in a safer square protecting g4 as well and stopping all stuff regarding knight d6 followed by e4 so uh, black plays bishop g7 well everything is protected but as we said this bishop on g7 it's gonna become a tall pawn king to f3 rook d7 and rook d2 well now we defend g4 successfully this knight on g6 is doing great it's uh, limiting all squares for this rook I mean this rook on g8 can't move 
and hopefully we're gonna play rook d1 followed by some check so everything is under control and I think from the practical point of view that bishop e3 white played before it's much better discontinuation maybe king of king f7 rook here and rook she d8 king f2 well as I said before uh, with the king we want to maybe run away of this e4 checks or maybe knight d6 uh, I mean feels like oh and we also run away of knight d4 check followed by rook takes d5 yeah this is the main threat I guess so yeah king f2 again there's no rush as white usually we have to get use of slowing down a little and then uh, go for the action like here king e8 king e1 defending all the rooks I guess there are other moves as well but white plays the safest and I think that's what we have to do knight d4 bishop takes rook takes and bishop c3 uh, well uh, I guess that we have to realize if we trade a lot of pieces our end game is won because we have the better bishop and we have such a powerful knight here these pawns are targets and what I also have to say here is that the bishop on g7 cannot move much right so rook takes d2 bishop takes b6 and rook c1 so here after rook c1 uh, black plays king d7 stopping rook c7 or rook c6 white plays bishop e3 see now uh, black pieces cannot move much uh, bishop g7 is overloaded defending f6 and h6 this knight is defending b6 and well he can move the king or the rook but as you'll see white plays slowly improving his king and rook c3 uh, by the way here okay black plays bishop f8 if he plays like e4 he's only creating an extra target for white such as b6 now it's gonna be e4 as well uh, because when he plays e4 he's not opening this diagonal so actually he's not helping his bishop so as I said e4 is only creating an extra target for white uh, when he plays bishop f8 he wants to defend actively uh, white plays king e4 which is great because uh, if we take on f8 trying to grab some material black is gonna have some counterplay on uh, g4 and yeah we can defend with rook c4 but he's gonna play knight d6 and I think he's gonna take this pawn sooner or later and when he takes on g4 he'll take on f5 too so there's no sense for white playing this and here after rook c3 bishop f8 king to e4 bishop b4 rook c2 now we're gonna take this pawn later so knight d6 check king d5 I think the king on d5 it's great as long as black cannot push it back but as you'll see in this game actually uh, black actually does that so knight b5 bishop takes to c3 check so here uh, we realize that this pawn is promoting and black can't stop it so here basically uh, black what he can try is trying to play this so he stops the h7 pawn there's no other way and here when we play g5 actually uh, he cannot take first of all yeah we create another pass pawn and we have 95 <clears throat> with this double threat uh, and then yeah, as, as we can see black can stop all these pawns from from promoting so yeah obviously this is too much so here I guess black has to resign if he plays something like this well of course we can just take I guess and the other one I like so much 95 which is yeah double threat he has to take and then we just play g6 followed by h7 g7 we promote 
for sure here so that is why uh, black resigns a uh, very nice example of how to play with the space advantage and well i hope you enjoyed this video and i'm gonna see you in next videos so take care <laughs>